Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast. This is Jessica Butts, your host and CEO and creator of Front Seat Life, where I help you be unapologetically who you are in your life, love, and business. Hello, Front Seat Lifers. This is Jessica Butts, and today feels like a very special episode. I've actually got a couple of these episodes coming up where these are reflection episodes. I am a big, big believer in looking back at the past and seeing how far you have come. So every year, obviously at the beginning of the year, I think that's standard for most people to think about what have I accomplished over the year? Last week I talked about rereading journals. I do this also on my birthday every year. I have the night before I go somewhere by myself. I really process, reread journals, think about how much I've accomplished over the year, what I have accomplished, what I haven't accomplished, things that I still need to work on. And this is also a new time for me to be doing this because this is today, today, actual. I'm recording this on uh, Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. And today is the eight year anniversary of of me graduating from graduate school. And I have five lessons today that I would like to share with you in reflection of this somewhat monumental occasion for me. I I actually don't remember celebrating this every year. I don't know where I've been or what I've been doing, but this year feels significant. And I actually, now that I'm talking about it, I actually realize I think I know why that is. And it's because so much in my life is actually changing right now. There's a lot of flexing. There's a lot of growing. There's a lot of letting go of things. There's a lot of new relationships. There's some changed relationships and new relationships and a a new level of my business and all kinds of relationships and life things shifting in my life right now. So I think that's why this eight-year anniversary feels so significant. But back to the five things, and and this isn't even one of them, but this is a, let's call this a pre- one <laughs> is a 0. 0.0.5 <laughs> is that looking back at how far you've come whether that be every 90 days which is what I do with my coaching groups I just had my girl boss quarterly meeting and my lady boss quarterly meeting last week and one of the things that I have them do is to look back on everything they've accomplished the last 90 days and notoriously 100% of the time everybody feels better after doing that exercise because we all think gosh maybe I haven't come that far and whether it be 90 days whether it be the anniversary of your birthday which is again is coming up for me and I'll be sharing that episode episode um, on uh, July 6th, I think will be that episode because my birthday is July 7th, which is a uh, Sunday this year. So that'll be the fifth actually. Again, or whether it be eight years, 10 years, five years, whatever it is, looking back at what have I accomplished? What do I still need to learn? Where am I still stuck? Because I think, again, as Dr. Phil says, I said this on last week's episode, the best predictor of future performance is past performance. And it's a, it's a good time to do so. So let's jump into the five things to talk to you about today. I'm excited. This this has just kind of come to me. This is how I do this podcast is I have a plethora of things that I want to talk to you guys about content. But sometimes I'm just really inspired. And today was one of those. I had a completely different episode for you today, but this came to me and it came very quickly and innately. And so again, I wanted to share the five things. So let's jump in to number one of the things that I have learned um, from the anniversary of graduate school. And number one is we, me, I, you, all of us, we've got to learn how to let go of the old to allow the new. My very dear friend, Sarah Dean from Shameless Mom Academy, she talks about making space for your future. And I like to think of this as like a bucket. And we are a bucket, if you will, of energy. And when we are full of old stories, old ways of being, relationships that no longer serve us, jobs that are keeping us stuck and in a mindset that we there's nothing else we can do, our bucket stays full 
and there's no way anything new can come in. I learned this years ago from one of the mindset books I read, probably The Happy Pocket Full of Money, as I love that book about mindset. And the idea is truly that if we are full of things that keep us stuck, full of old stories, old patterns, old relationships, old friendships, nothing new can come in. And so sometimes, like Sarah Dean would say, we need to make space for our future or let go of the old. And back in that time of my life, eight years ago, I was still married. And I think about all the things I had to let go of during that time and the subsequent eight years. And that was literally a, a, a marriage. I mean, a big part of the reason we got divorced was I was living a completely incongruent life. We were just not on the same page anymore. And so I had to release that relationship because those two things could not exist. There's a, you know, that's a whole nother story as, as to why he didn't want me to go back to graduate school and all of that. But basically it was living an incongruent life. He wanted me to stay the same way. And I really, the reason was is because he was afraid I was going to leave him, which is inevitably what ended up happening. But I could have stayed in a, in that relationship where he did not want me to grow. And again, that was his own insecurities, his own stuff that was going on at the time. And that's another podcast. But I could have stayed in that mindset. And instead, I had to let go of that, literally let go of the relationship in order to do what I needed and wanted to do for my future. I also had to let go of a job. I, I quit. I mean, I literally took a severance. I, it was an absolutely a sign from God. Uh, they were laying people off at the time. I was one of the most senior people on that team. And I, I volunteered because I knew that it was time. I didn't even tell my husband. Oh my God. I didn't even tell my husband at the time. I literally took it and thought, oh shit, I probably better let him know that I just did that. But it felt like this sign from God that if I didn't take this opportunity that was in front of my face for a severance, an opportunity to go back to graduate school, it wasn't going to come again. So I quite honestly, I mean, whether that's wrong or right, it is what it is. I didn't really even think about it. I, I knew that this was a sign. Do you guys know signs? You guys have signs, right? Please tell me that you have a sign. And sometimes we listen to them and we act on them and sometimes we don't. And with the signs that I don't act on, oh my God, do we not get so mad at ourselves? I remember, gosh, I remember being married and thinking, okay, God, okay, okay, God, I'm going to make a deal with you. I didn't act on that last sign that you sent me. So can you please send me another sign? <laughs> How many of you know this? How many of you have done this? Oh, <laughs> we make a deal with God. Okay, okay, bro. I'm sorry. I did not act on it the last time. You were super nice. You sent me this sign. I completely ignored you. So can you please send me another sign? So again, sometimes we act on it. Sometimes we don't. At that time of my life, I knew that this was the sign. This was the thing that was putting in my face. Here's some money. You can go. And, and that's exactly what I did. I also had to release some old stories about myself. I wasn't fantastic in school. I was not even great in undergraduate. I was not a fantastic student. I wasn't a terrific writer. I would still say I'm actually not a terrific writer, even though I've written two books. There's a lot of old stories. I'm not smart enough to get a graduate degree. Who am I to do this? Nobody from my family's done it. Like, who am I? Like, there's so many old stories. And we have to be willing to let go, to let go of things that no longer serve us. That story that I'm not smart enough and not good enough, I had to release that story. I had to release a job that no longer served me to get to where I wanted to go. Let me be clear about that, that if I wanted to stay in the same life, it would have been fine. I mean, eight years could have gone by. I could be in the exact same place. I could still be married to Brian. I could still be working in HR. I could still be living the same life if that's what I wanted. But most of you listening to this right now don't want that, or you wouldn't be listening to these personal development podcasts and reading books and things like that. 
And so if you are happy and content where you are, th th this isn't super relevant. But most people I know in my life want something better, something they want to grow. They want to evolve. It doesn't even mean that sometimes what you have is not fantastic. But in my case, the job was absolutely incongruent. My relationship was incongruent. These stories were incongruent in my life to where I knew I wanted to be. Where I knew I wanted to be. I had to release those things in order to get to this vision that I have in my life. And I want all of you that are listening right now to put yourself in those shoes because I know you've been there. I know you have those visions for your life. I know you've had the inkling. I know you've seen yourself doing something different. Elizabeth Gilbert talks about that in Big Magic a lot, that we are given these visions and they are ours for a reason and that it is our job to then act on them. And we have to let go of some of the old to allow new in. That's number one. Number two is stepping in to the unknown. This is a very interesting thing for me because this has happened probably two or three different times in my life. So it's not super significant. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. It's probably been a half a dozen times. And it is a very weird sensation. And I'm curious if, if you've felt this is when you step into the unknown, you are literally going to get to a place in your life that you've never felt what you're going to feel before. And that is a weird ass feeling. It's a weird feeling to step into a new way of being, to step into a new relationship, to step into the unknown. So there's a couple different, the one in particular that I'll remember is when I stepped into, I had been dating a lot when I first, uh, not when I first, you know, obviously I spent a good, about six months to a year of just healing and not dating. And because I just think that's ridiculous when people jump into new relationships. Anyway, that's my two cents on that. But I needed to heal. But when I started dating, when a relationship would end, I would start dating immediately or I would start looking again. I would get online and start doing the online shopping, as I used to call it. And I went through a phase where I decided I'm just going to chill. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to go back to where I was when I first got divorced and I'm going to spend time alone and I'm going to be by myself and I'm going to not do this like in just almost obsessive shopping to look. And I remember that feeling of going, oh, this is unknown. I'm back to this feeling that I've never felt before and sitting with that and going, okay, well, how do I feel? Am I uncomfortable? Uh, do I feel empowered? Like really getting clear about how you feel is pretty fascinating because it's unknown. You're stepping in to the unknown. It feels weird and scary at the same time. I'm actually experiencing this right now in my business. I just doubled my team last week and I've now stepping into a new way of being in my business that I've never, ever done before. And yep, it feels weird. It feels terrifying. But more than anything, it's just unknown. And it's, I think there's something like mind blowing about getting to, to a place in your life that you've never felt before and being in a place where I was leaving a marriage eight years ago and going into graduate school and stepping into this new way of being and, and not having a nine to five job. And all of it was brand new. All of it was brand new. And that takes some processing. That takes some journaling. That I might take some therapy. It might take talking to some friends. But being able to step into the unknown and feel all the feels that come along with that is definitely part of what I have learned. All right, front seat lifers. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Uh, I am doing something I have never done before. I am doing front seat life summer school for all my girl boss ladies out there. This is for the entrepreneurs that are kind of just starting out and or have been flailing in their business. They're kind of all over the place. They, they can't get their shit together. They're, they don't know what's wrong. They don't understand because they haven't 
built the foundations of their business. So for the entire month of July and August, and then a huge epic one day implementation and integration session in person or live stream on September 4th, I am going to help you get the foundations of your business together. We are going to cover what to do first and when, your website, your logo, your email list, all the stuff, social media, when, where, how often, what is your point of view, figuring out what your niche is so you can be rich and not broke, your front seat and your back seat, building a team, when to do it, how to do it, and figuring out don't do stuff that you suck at, how to stay motivated, support, mastermind, and accountability partners, what is your zone of genius, scheduling, which is time blocking, what's important to you, CEO time, rocks, 90 day goals, which has changed my business and my client's business, mindset, and then of course, lastly, my signature system, the 3S method of structures, systems, and singular focus. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. For those of you, and I know you guys, because I've had millions of you as my clients, maybe not millions, hundreds of you as my clients, you're flailing. You've been making this promise to yourself and to your spouse, and you're saying you're going to get it together, and you never do. This is your opportunity to get everything in one place. It is Sprunty Life Summer School. We're going to get you in in June. It starts July 8th. Every Monday at 9 a.m., I will be giving you content. You will then be doing homework and you will end the week with implementation. That is an eight week process. And then again, we have an epic full day. You can come to Seattle, you can live stream it where we will do an entire day of integration and implementation. This is it guys. I'm so, so excited to bring you this because I have been hearing this from my clients for years that this is something that they need and want. And I am finally bringing it to you all summer long. Get yourself signed up. It's only open May until June 25th. That's it. I will see you there. So number three is a huge one. This is, uh, I'm calling it dream and plan. So when I was stuck, and I'm telling you my story because I, I think it's going to be your story as well, or, or very similar. When I was stuck, that life that I had created was the only life I knew. Of course, it's the only life you know. All I knew was Brian. All I knew was my nine to five job. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything else. All I knew were the friends that I had at that time. I had not taken the time to visualize. I had not taken the time to dream and plan for a life that was unknown. Again, back referencing step two, it's the unknown. I didn't know what entrepreneurship looked like. I didn't know what graduate school looked like. I didn't know what <clears throat> new people in my life looked like and new friends and, and none of it. I didn't know what any of it looked like. I didn't understand what writing a book looked like or being a public speaker or, or any of it. I just, it was all new. And so part of what I had to do back then, and I know very well what I need to continue to do, is making space to dream and plan. One of the main ways that I used to do that, very much so, and I've told that story before, is that I would get up in the mornings when I was still married, and I would go into the other room, and I would lay on the floor, and I would do a guided visual meditation called life visualization because I hadn't allowed myself to dream outside of my current reality. And I think that's true for a lot of us, that our current reality is all we can actually see. It's so hard to see past or outside of our current reality. Again, we don't know the unknown, so we can't even see it. And the only way that I know to do that are two things. One is visualization, 
creating the space. I want to be very clear about that. And I'm piggybacking off of last week's episode about the reasons that I journal, the reasons that I have a morning practice. And a big part of that is creating space in my life for new images, new feelings, new new plans for my life to come in. So that's you know 1.5 of dream and plan. The next part of this is hanging out with like-minded people. This is epic because if we're hanging out with the same people from our old life only, that is the only reality we have. Those are the people that live in that world of whether it be nine to five or stuck in a job or, or you know, all the people that are complaining about their nine to five jobs, right? We know those people. That becomes your current reality. In order to dream and plan and look outside of your current reality, we have to have people that are doing what we want to be doing. And back in that day, eight years ago, that was one of the most transformational moments of my life. I had just quit my job. It was my last day, uh, Friday. The next day, Saturday, I went to this meetup group for, I don't even remember what it was, but everybody in that room was either a psychotherapist or like an organization, uh, OD coach, an organizational and development coach. Every single person in that room was doing what I wanted to do. And I had never... I never heard of the school that they graduated from. I had never heard the books. I didn't understand what they were doing. I didn't understand how to create the world that they were living in. And so I just soaked it all up. I listened to every single thing that they said. I mean, I figured out what graduate school they all graduated from. I drove there on Monday morning and I said, apparently I need to go to school here. And I signed up. I just said, great, how do I apply? Where's my interview? Here's my $50,000, like whatever I need to do because I had not had that vision two fucking days before. Like how crazy is that? That I didn't even have that reality two days before. I didn't even know what Leadership Institute of Seattle was. I didn't even understand the idea of going back to graduate school. I didn't even understand any of it. But if I hadn't allowed myself to flush something out, let go of the old, step into the unknown and dream and plan, none of this would have happened. None of it. So you've got to dream and then you've got to start planning. Number four, you got to work your ass off. You got to work your ass off. This is a big one. You can dream and plan all you want, but if you don't have a new work ethic, a new reality of working your ass off, it's not going to happen. So whatever that is, whether or not this is, you know, your new reality is uh, you want to be in better shape. You want to have better health. You want to get off of medication. You want to start your own business. You want to have a better relationship with your children. You want to have a better, whatever it is. You got to work your ass off. You need to be committed. So one of the very first things that I did is when I graduated from graduate school. So first of all, I worked my ass off in graduate school. I mean, I, this is one of the points that I want to make under this uh, number four, working your ass off is you got to say no. You got to start saying no to old things in your old life. So when I was in graduate school, that meant working on the weekends, writing papers, saying, no, I can't go out. And I mean, when I was, you know, still drinking a bit then and having fun, and I still do, I guess. But uh, I was in my mid thirties and I had to say, no, I can't stay out past 11 because I got to get up in the morning and write my thesis or I need to go to graduate school or whatever it was. But I had to say no back then to things that were part of my old life. And that is part of working your ass off or setting new boundaries for your new life. Then when I built a business, I had to start saying no to all kinds of new things. And one of the main things that I had to say no to, and this really triggers a lot of people, is I stopped doing like lunches during the week. You know, there's these people that are like, oh, I'd love to meet you for lunch, even with my friends. Like, 
I didn't have time for that anymore. I didn't have a three hours in middle of, you know, a Tuesday or whatever. I, I could have chosen to do that, but you know what I chose to do was to work, to be committed to my craft, to read a book, to figure out how to get clients, to learn how to do marketing, to teach myself this thing. Like I, I didn't have any clients. I, that's not true. I had one client who was paying me $10 a week. I made $10 a week. $10 a week. And I had, I could have done anything. I could have fucked off all week long. I could have gone to yoga in the middle of the day. I could have gone to ladies who lunch. I could have, uh, I could have slept in, but I worked my fucking ass off during that time. I still do. And it's about learning to say no and setting a schedule for yourself. I, again, I had one client that is one hour in 40 hours a week. But you know what I did? I got up, I got dressed like I was going to see clients. I wore the clothes, I put on some makeup, and I went into an office that I had I had rented before I even graduated graduate school because I was so convinced that I was going to make this happen and make this a reality. And I spent the other 39 hours during the week teaching myself how to run a business, marketing and going into networking meetings and finding like-minded people and hiring a coach and doing the lessons and, and all of the things that it takes to run a business. It doesn't mean because you are not seeing clients, you get to go far around. Yes, you have to still have a life, but you have to be committed. You got to work your ass off. And I think the other point of that is getting a coach for what you don't know. You know, when I graduated graduate school, I knew how to be a great therapist. I mean, I had that down. I, you know, I was felt very confident about my skills, but what I didn't know was how to run a business. They didn't teach me that in graduate school. So I had to go back to what I call business school now. And that's what I teach people now is entrepreneurship. You got to learn the eight steps that I'm teaching in summer school. You got to learn these eight steps that come along with entrepreneurship about the the actual steps that it takes so that you're not completely losing your mind about how to start it and how to not make mistakes and how to not waste money by doing it wrong the first time. So that that's that's number 4. Work your ass up. And number 5, I will end here is creating a new life takes new. <laughs> takes new mindset it takes new routines. It takes new habits. It takes a new way of being. And therefore, we have to act accordingly. Creating a new life means all of the things we've talked about. Letting go of the old to allow the new. Stepping into the unknown. Creating a new life takes dreaming and planning. Working your ass off. And and again, building a new mindset, reading the right books, hanging out with the right people, having new routines like I just talked about. Just be because you don't have any clients doesn't mean you get to sleep in until eight o'clock. It means you get up and you take care of your body. Sorry, one of my sheets just fell off my wall. You got to create new habits, new structure, new routines. That is part of being an entrepreneur, part of starting a new business, creating a new life takes new. And part of that, again, is new routine, new structures, and then also a new way of being. Having like-minded people, having a coach, saying no to some of the old shit in your old life. So creating a new life takes new. Act accordingly. That would be my quote for this uh, is act accordingly. Stop living this incongruent life or, or, or trying to allow two things to be at the same time. We have to learn how to let go. And so these are five of the main things that I've realized I have learned over the last eight years since leaving graduate school. Again, one, letting go of the old and allowing the new. Number two, stepping in to the unknown and feeling what that feels like. Number three, dreaming and planning, visualizing, hanging out with like-minded people. Number four, working your ass off. And number five, creating a new life takes new. 
Cakes new. Act accordingly. Thank you for listening. I hope that this has been helpful. I love bringing you this content. I love reading your reviews on iTunes. Pop over there, go to iTunes, rate and review. Please share this. If it's inspiring and you feel like it's worthy of four, five stars, I sure would love a five-star review from you, some comments, um, letting me know how this is impacting you. And as always, if you ever want to reach out or DM me or send me a message or send me love or something, Thing. I would love to hear from you. You can always find me over on Instagram at Front Seat Life. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week. All right, everybody, I have a confession to make. I have a new obsession and that obsession is reading your ridiculously wonderful, loving, amazing reviews on iTunes. I love them. None of this even matters without all of you. So as a thank you, each week I will be reading one review on air and calling out your review with your name or your iTunes handle. So here's how it's gonna go. You're gonna go to Instagram and follow Follow me at Front Seat Life. When you hear your name called out on the podcast, you are going to send me a DM with your address and say, oh my gosh, you just read my review. And I or my team will be sending you some Front Seat Life swag. We've got books and we've got tank tops and we've got journals and we have these adorable pink swells. So we will be choosing from the goodie bag and sending it out as a thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. And I am so deeply honored to have the opportunity to thank you back. Today's review comes from JMSHR2 on iTunes. It's a beautiful one. So let me start by saying thank you. This person gives a five-star review and says, Front Seat Life podcast is a must. I love Jessica's podcast and books. I binge listen to the episodes and I can't get enough of her insights and encouragement. I especially love the episode with her sister, Erica. I truly appreciate Jessica's passion, authenticity, humor, and willingness to share herself in such a transparent way. Jessica is a wealth of knowledge and her practical and powerful suggestions and teachings motivate me to continue to do the work I created to create the life that I wanted. Each episode gives a new sense of clarity to me. Jessica helps people understand their personality types and she shares different ways to help you thrive in life. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world, Jessica. You are an inspiration. Thank you beyond words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options and the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or strategy days or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.